Welcome everyone to GamerMelt. Today, we have one nanometer actual release dates for the RTX 3080 Ti and 3070 Ti, Intel's gaming GPU's release timing, Ryzen 6000 APU specs and release date. And forget about the GPU shortages because AMD is about to make all GPUs way faster. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, it looks like one nanometer is actually set to be a thing. In a recent story by Verdict, TSMC, along with the National University of Taiwan and MIT, have announced a new breakthrough that was made while working on one nanometer chips. According to the report, MIT first discovered that using bismuth as the contact electrodes for the 2D material can reduce resistance and increase current. TSMC later optimized it with NTU reducing the component channel. All of this has apparently led to the possibility of one nanometer parts, which is pretty incredible given IBM just recently announced their two nanometer chips. Though of course, that isn't really the actual size of the gates anymore given how chip makers name their process. Either way, it's certainly a huge feat and it could pave the way for even better nodes in the future. As of now, I mostly think it's important to focus on fixing the recently discovered vulnerabilities before making things faster. And of course, with yet another security issue found, it's never been a better time to protect your data. And now you can for just $1.39 a month with today's sponsor, Atlas VPN, the tool that works with all of your devices to encrypt your data and hide your virtual location. Not only that, but you get their data breach monitoring tool, which scans the internet to see if your personal information has ever been listed in recorded data breaches or data dumps. And with over 500 servers across the world and support for unlimited devices, Atlas VPN has you covered. And when you click the link in the description, you'll get their incredible deal of just $1.39 a month for three years. And if you don't like it, you'll have a full 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Sign up for Atlas VPN in the description below. Next up, we have release dates for NVIDIA's upcoming RTX 3080 Ti and 3070 Ti GPUs. And when I say release dates, I don't just mean the announcement. This story originally comes from WCCF Tech, and like others have said, they do think NVIDIA is planning to announce them on May 31st, to which NVIDIA is set to present at Computex that day, so I think it's pretty clear. And make sure to subscribe to GamerMeld to stay up to date on all those announcements. Now, when it comes to the actual release, WCCF Tech claims that they are currently scheduled with the 3080 Ti releasing on June 3rd and the 3070 Ti on June 10th and reviewers are set to go live a day before each launch. Of course, whether you'll actually get a chance to buy one is questionable at best. Next up, it looks like Igor's lab has shared more details about Intel's upcoming high-performance gaming discrete GPUs. In the new update, he shared a table that goes over a few things, with the most important being the execution units of the upcoming cards. Like before, it shows five SKUs, though I will say that SKU 4 and SKU 5 have different core counts from what he shows right here, and I'm not sure if that's just a mistake or what. Igor's lab is usually spot on with their leaks. Either way, the core counts in the higher end models, which should be the desktop gaming parts, are all the same, so we really can expect a GPU with a whopping 512 EUs, which translates to 4096 cores. Not only that, but according to what Intel has been planning, they are going to release the smaller two models at the end of this year, with the three bigger parts slowly releasing in Q1 of next year. Time, as always, will tell. Next up for today, a roadmap was just revealed by the leaker Vegeta on Twitter, and as you can see, it's for AMD's mobile APUs, though of course, their desktop APUs are typically based on the same architecture. Either way, as you can see, AMD's next-gen APUs are codenamed Rembrandt, and should be their Ryzen 6000 parts. What's interesting is that it is in fact based on the rumored Zen 3 Plus, which apparently is 6 nanometers. Now, we've heard that AMD cancelled their Zen 3 Plus for desktop, or that it was always just meant for APUs. Regardless, it's clearly here, and apparently it does come with RDNA 2, so AMD will finally move past their Vega architecture. Not only that, but it's set for launch next year, which makes me think AMD will likely release some kind of updated Zen 3 for PC this year. One thing that's apparently different on this is that Vegeta claims Van Gogh has been cancelled. So clearly this is a bit older, but it's yet another roadmap claiming Zen 3 Plus and RDNA 2 are coming to APUs. 
And lastly for today, I've got a really exciting story that could actually make all of your new and old GPUs way more powerful. The first part of the story comes from a patent by AMD that was recently made public, and as you can see, it's titled Gaming Super Resolution, meaning this is for AMD's DLSS competitor. And as for what it does, it effectively uses a mixture of linear and non-linear downsampling techniques to create a higher resolution image. They also claim that their approach is better than deep learning because it uses information from the original image, and that part is really the key here. AMD doesn't require deep learning, which means like Tom's hardware suggests, it could potentially work on GPUs other than the RX 6000 series. And that isn't just an assumption, as at least according to Red Gaming Tech, he's heard from at least two sources that these aren't just on the RTX 6000 cards. In fact, they said it isn't limited to the RDNA architecture, meaning these could go back to Vega or even Polaris. And even in the patent, AMD mentions other devices like phones, tablets, and more. Now, Red Gaming Tech also claims that the tech is really good, though it's not completely up to the newest DLSS titles. Of course, like DLSS, things will likely improve as more developers get on board. Not only that, but Moore's Law is Dead claims that the tech is really easy to implement. Basically, this could be one of the biggest software updates ever. We're talking your old GPU could get upwards of double the performance in titles that support the tech. And with consoles almost certainly set to get it and implementation being far easier, tons of games will likely receive support. Whether AMD means to or not, this could be a big help with current GPU shortages. And if Cortex release in June leak is accurate, we should hear something at AMD's Computex event in just a couple weeks. Fingers crossed. So while that does it for today, do you think AMD's DLSS equivalent will be huge or are you just ready for Ryzen 6000 APUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!